I'm probably more excited about this than most people. I think the reason why I'm excited about Grand Arena is that it is a competitive mode without a shard chat. I just kind of feel that like uh, the arena mode, the squad arena right now in the current system is shard chats and it's not truly competitive. And Territory Wars is your entire guild. So this is like something that really appeals to me. Uh, also in these patch notes, uh, looks like the join territory uh, button that was grayed out has been fixed. And then there's also a hint at maybe that we're gonna be getting Scout Trooper. They have these new icons. We're gonna go over the entire post, but they're actually showing a picture right here. Check it out right there. Scout Trooper. <laughs> Shut up, Arnold! <laughs> uh, we're both screaming about this right now. Uh, let's go over the post. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff in here, a lot of subtle things about matchmaking. Uh, some of the battles might be three versus three. They talk about uh, various faction bonuses maybe coming into play. We're gonna start off with season zero. It's gonna be a seven day tournament. Uh, the first day you join, second day you set defenses, uh, then this third day you attack, and then you set defense, then you attack, then you set defense, then you attack, and it goes for seven days. Ah, uh, that is pretty cool. Uh, then you get your rewards. No word on what the rewards are going to be, but we will have to see. So let's just talk about Grand Arena first because I'm excited about that. Uh, it says the ultimate test. It unlocks at level 85. Then we've got a picture right there of what the in-game display is gonna be. Matchmaking, and this is gonna read this very carefully. Leveraging the new matchmaking changes, players are placed in a group of eight opponents from all over the world that have similar collections, so that means GP, so that all the players have fun and challenging fights throughout the entire Grand Arena. Once players in a group, matchmaking pairs players with a similar number of wins, rising to the highest skill players to the top of the group. So you're gonna, if you lose the first round, you're gonna be paired against a loser and so on, and then you're gonna get to the top. And then it says, matchmaking avoid players that have already fought wherever possible. Group edging cases, instances that the number of players participating are not divisible, eight. Don't think that's gonna happen very often. They're gonna get buys, and that's fine. And then we get to go down a little bit farther. The schedule. This is where it says three rounds against different opponents, and it's going to be seven 24-hour phases over the course of a week. Join, set defense, attack, set defense, attack, set defense, attack. And the question that I had when I first read this is, how much more time is this going to take per day? And the one snapshot that they showed right here, they showed that. Based on the size of the lowest person's GP would determine the number of squads and it could also include ships. And this particular screenshot, which not only shows the scout trooper icon, says squad size of five, five total battles. Now they do mention even the possibility of having like three units attacking three units. It says, at the end of the joint period of snapshot taken is the player's collection that will be used throughout the length of the event. So that means you can't move mods around. Uh, when the, the first phase is set up, you set your mods the way you want to do it, and then you place the units. And then if you change the mods around during the week, it's not going to change. There's a snapshot that's taken of your collection that will be used throughout the length of the event. This means that further improvement to units, including the changing of mods, will not affect the Grand Arena event for any of the rounds. And I predict that this event and this entire Grand Arena is going to be mods, mods, mods. That's my personal prediction. I think mods are going to be everything. Gameplay. Grand Arena is meant to have the ultimate test of skill, so we don't have any plans currently to have combat bonuses, but I think they will. That said, there are a variety of events, including different number of territories and some events that have three unit squads. I kind of like that idea. Although that might mean that the trio dominates always, but just using three units, kind of like ships we use three units and starts out. Scaling defensive squads fleets and then to provide a fun experience for all players, the number of defensive squad fleets scales based on the GP of the lowest player in the group. And in this example here, it shows five. Then 
It shows how they do banners, and then they also explain here how tiebreakers are done, which I imagine is going to be pretty standard. Similar territories, banners are earned for setting defense, successful attacks, and conquering a territory. The one new aspect is that ties are no longer possible. Taking steps to mitigate ties and remove them entirely. I like this a lot. Existing ways to earn banners and territory royals will also exist in Grand Arena, so we're not going to get anything new there. This includes number of attempts, surviving units, unslotted units, However, the value of using unslotted units has been increased to emphasize the risk reward of using an undersized party. Woof! Oh boy! Full health and protection! Two more criteria to further mitigate ties. An additional banner is earned for each unit at full protection, and another banner for each unit at full health. This further identifies not only the way Squad Fleet won, but how well it won. Bonus protection does not count and units into the battle with no protection will automatically earn protection bonuses. So this is highly interesting. I imagine that after we've been playing this for a while, uh, we'll be able to win always on offense. And the advantage is always towards the player because the AI does not respond as well. And you look at your opponent's team, you put in the team that can correctly beat it, and you're going to be able to win every single battle. And so that case taking a lower type team or coming through with full protection and full health is gonna give you more points. And I'm pretty sure that is how it's going to run unless there's some sort of team out there that just always win on defense. Currently, there's not a team like that in the game. Revan teams, of course, hold up better than others, but they're not unbeatable. Tiebreakers, and then they explain, rare occasion there's tiebreakers, player with the highest GP will win, and then it could go to a coin flip. Auto deploy, if you forget to set defense, it'll use your prior pre-done squads that you use, and then rewards are right here. Small reward for every squad that is defeated, rewards based on winning, losing a round, event rank based rewards. Now they don't say what the rewards are gonna be. I hope it's Scout Trooper. I hope it's a Padme. Maybe it's a Rebel Princess Leia. I hope it's a character is what I'm trying to say. Uh, we will see. Maybe this is how they're going to introduce the last piece of Gear 12 before we go to Gear 13. I don't know. They're going to start all of this off with a Season Zero exhibition event. So we will see when that happens. Now, I just want to say that I'm thinking that they want this to go live this month. The Road Ahead blog did say this month, and I know that they usually take some time off at the end of the year. So I think this is coming sooner than later. We will see, but I wouldn't be surprised if this came out in the next week or so. Portraits! I don't know how I feel about this, but what I do like about portraits is that they show Scout Trooper right here. And they also show C-3PO, and I don't know, that was the intro character. I know you guys are going to correct me and put it in the comment section, but I don't know who that is. Some sort of uh, Twi'lek of some kind. Portrait new feature lets you show off your accomplishment. Express yourself by placing an image next to your name throughout the game. For example, you can unlock Darth Vader portrait by accomplishing the Sith Master prestigious quest. New prestigious quests have been created and some existing quests have been updated toward portraits and new titles. And then they list that. Many existing titles will have a portrait associated with it. Players that have already earned the title will have the portrait automatically unlocked. The one exception is the rank one in raids portrait, only unlocked for players that have earned rank one in the past six months. In addition, titles will also appear next to your player name throughout the game. I like that. What do you think about that? We got Joe Lee right there next to Jedi Knight. Time settings. Now, they talked about this before, and I think this is a big deal for people that have families and who don't want to be playing in their, their arena during that hour, and then they're supposed to have dinner so you can change your settings up to twice a year and we're going to read the post but i actually just want them all to line up more than anything else I, I really don't like having my fleet at a different time than my squad arena i prefer that they both happened at the same time for me anyways that would be just much better than dragging it out over two hours and then you know if i wanted to do it in the morning i could set that or i could coordinate with my shard mates and put it on some obscure time zone that nobody has so i'm not fighting with everybody following are examples of times that are altered when the daily activity resets time is changed daily reset time event timers Squad Arena Reward Time, Fleet Arena Reward Time, and Free Energy re Reward Time. Guild Timers are not affected, including guild activities. 
territory battles, territory wars, and raid timers. And that is, uh, when the guild is created, it's based off of the time zone of the person that created the guild. And that's how guilds have certain reset times, but it's based when the guild was originally created. Lastly, in this post, there's a lot of bugs, but the main thing is that the territory wars grayed out join button has been fixed. Fix an issue with Territory Wars where the join button was grayed out during the join phase despite being available. <laughs> That's probably the most important thing out of the rest of this stuff. So what do you guys think? I'm personally excited about it, but I know when these new things come to the game, people are usually like, I don't like new stuff, and it doesn't always roll out perfectly, but over time, I find that these things get sorted out and that I do appreciate it, but for me, I like being the competitive, uh, but not in the sense of a guild. I like one versus one, and I always kind of felt that the squad arena in its current form uh, was a little bit diluted because the payout times were, were different for each person, and so the shard chats kind of took over. Uh, this is going to be true competition, which I personally think is great, and then being able to change the time zone. Portraits, that's okay. Let me know what you think. Put it down in the comment section. All right, well, now it's time for the giveaway. Uh, because we're talking about uh, Battle of Endor and Return of the Jedi, we got to do a Return of the Jedi style giveaway. So really hope you liked this video today, because if you did, you are in luck. For every single person who likes this video, you'll be getting for free in your account an eight-star Forced Ghost Anakin. This is not a scam. Just for you, you get to pick which one. You've got the original version, and then you've got the newer Lucas modded one, right? Two different ones to choose from. You get to pick. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Keep on gaming.